and it's just the beginning. And Eric Burton's pulling in. Eric Burton, Daniel Day. Actually, Daniel Day pitted a few laps ago under caution. He's pitting, and so is the leader, Greg Brown. Well, it is halfway, so they should be able to make it all the way on gas, I would think. Burton pulls in with Richard Johnson, Chris Summers, Nick Mace. They all pull in. And the leads Andres Allen pretty much by himself out here. He's probably going to pit this time by, yes, with Ian Duda as well. And Ashley Mace is going to gamble a little bit here. She stays out. And so it is the 8 car of James Silver Fox. Brad Johnson, Hayden Klein, DJ Curtis, Michael White, John Dillon. All of them guys end up staying out. Andres Allen pits from the lead. Sean Galligan also pits. Dylan Young, the point leader, with a bad run here, run here today. He right now has three top tens in a row and was looking to do that here today to try and get another top ten, but he's not going to be able to do it. Ashley Mace staying out yet again, making a long stretch here. I don't know why she would stretch it here, but... Also, the eight cars also stand out for a long run here. James Sorofox and Brad Johnson. DJ Curtis, Hayden Klein there with damage there. But Evernham staying out as well. Michael White stays out with Sean, not Charles Jackson, John Dillon, William Duncan, and Chris Washer. There's Jake Bassinger, Eugene Max. There's Greg Brown. He's actually going to beat out Andres Allen for this spot here. Trying to see where all these other guys are. Ashley May still has not pit. And neither has James Sorofox. But I do know for a fact Ashley Mace cannot go the rest of the way on fuel. She has not pitted since the drop of the green flag. And Ashley is gonna go around another time. Sorofox, though, not gonna do it. He's gonna stay out. Um, or he's gonna pull in, my bad. Brad Johnson, Hayden Klein, everyone else besides Ashley Mace comes in for gas and tires and everything. But on the race track now, Greg Brown and Andres Allen pretty much out there doing their thing. And trying to run down Ashley Mace. Ashley's really losing time by staying out. Not, I, this is pretty a bad call for Ashley Mace. I, I don't know what why she actually decided she wanted to stay out longer. That allowed it... Um, Greg Brown, who's right behind her there, to gain all the ground with fresh tires, and she's going to lose a lot of positions there for it. Everyone comes in and everything, and they're coming on out. Greg Brown, I think, is going to end up with the lead, if I'm not mistaken. We're going to check and see, but I don't know if they're going to have to pit again. If they do, then Ashley Mays could be sitting in a good spot, but I don't know. This race was a fuel mileage race last season. Greg Brown's not the leader. The leader is... I think Greg Brown is the leader. No, Silver Fox stayed out an extra lap. No, Ashley Mays is the leader. Where is Greg Brown? Greg is right there. There's, there he is. And where's Ashley at? Oh. Ashley's right there. She she had to have lost that spot. She had to. Greg Brown did take the lead. It was a scoring thing problem from NRF 2003. It was being retarded. Um, Greg Brown, the new leader. Andres Allen's in second place there. I don't know if they'll be able to run down Greg Brown. Greg Brown's just sitting pretty out front now. Andres Allen in second place there. That's what he really needs. Andres Allen really needs that because he has no top tens this entire season so far. It's been three races in and it's about time to get on a roll and pretty much bad luck's kept Allen out of the top ten this season. Daniel Day's got had a fast forward and he's dropped a third place there. Eric Burton along with teammate Richard Johnson's been up there as well running inside the top five. Summers right there in the one car. It's pretty impressive to see Chris um, running really good. The last time we seen Chris Summers win a race, though, it came all the way back in Season 1 at Atlanta. So, good to see Chris running up front here. He's an old pioneer of the Sony Cup Series. So is Richard Johnson both. 
They're looking to go three wide here for the fourth position. But Chris is not going to get the spot on Johnson. Johnson thinking low on Daniel Day for the third spot there. But back here, Nick Mays also only had one top ten that came back at Daytona. And trying to get something back on a roll here. But look at this. Boy, they're racing really hard. Burton trying to go up the middle there. See if he can't get no run. But Summers is going to take that spot. Johnson to third now. And Andreas is moving his way forward there. But got lap car Noah Hart in the way. And he may play a little better factor of how Allen's lap goes there. But Greg Brown, if he does not have to pit, it's Greg Brown's race from here. Look at the distance he has right here over Andres Allen. You see that distance right there? That's a big gap right there. There's no way Andres Allen can catch Greg Brown. It's all up to if Greg Brown has enough fuel to make it the rest of the way. And knowing Greg's, Greg Brown's luck, he'll have to pull in the pits. But we do not want to jinx him. He's cornered. He's only got four or five more laps to go. It's been a while since Evernhelm has won a race. I think, I'm not quite sure, but if I'm not mistaken, the last time Evernhelm won a race was Jacob Hart at Las Vegas in Season 8. Driving for the 9 car, so the 9 trying to go back to victory lane. Remember that 9 team went to a championship in Season number 4 with Hayden Klein. Um, with no, they didn't even win a race that season. So, Greg Brown driving for a championship running car. And he's proven his chances here to be. But Duncan's going to get in the way here. But it's not going to be really terrible for Duncan to get in the way. Greg Brown's going to get underneath Duncan there. Sean Galligan looks like he may be in the way here in a few laps as well. Greg Brown, like I said, I don't think no one's going to catch him. But Andreas Allen. Where's Nick Mason's? flew by these guys. Where did the 48 come from? I don't even know. Nick Mason shot out of a rocket and has now shot all the way up from I think it all the way up from 7th place all the way up to 3rd now. It's got by up for Summers, Burton, Day, and Johnson. And it's really being a fast race car. Andres Allen has um, Duda riding behind him there. His lap car But Greg Brown, he's only got a lap and a half to go for Greg Brown here at Atlanta to win his second career victory. Greg Brown has been so long. I don't even know how many races it's been, but it's been a long time. White flag for Greg Brown. It's been long enough. A lot of frustrations for this driver here of Greg Brown. No luck whatsoever for Greg Brown, but the luck is going to be on his side today for the Dodge Charger of Greg Brown's number 9 car through turns 3 and 4. Greg Brown is going to come through turns 3 and 4. Black car Galligan's in the way, but it's not going to be anything for Greg Brown. Dominating the race here at Atlanta, Greg Brown wins and goes back to victory lane here in Atlanta. Greg Brown finally goes back to victory lane. He's had so much frustrations, a lot of DNFs, a lot of top 10s, and a lot of top 5s, but no wins along the era from Season 2 to Season 10. Season 2 of Martinsville. It's the last time we'd seen Greg Brown drive the car into victory lane. Well, he gets to do it again. Greg Brown back to victory lane. And this win's going to help him with the chances of a wild card spot. Bringing Evernham to the first win of the season for that team. Congratulations to Greg Brown on the victory here today. Let's get you to your finishing results.